Hello, my name is Naima Ramos Chapman, and I am the associate editor at campusprogress.org and pushback.org. And we're here with Ann Hedgepath, the government relations manager at American Association of University Women. And we're here to talk about their newly released report called Graduating to a Pay Gap. So could you tell us a little bit about the report? Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I think it's great that a lot of organizations are interested in talking about student debt and its impact. Um, and AEW's new report, Graduating to a Pay Gap, um, sort of took on two things that are, are really key in this conversation. The first is understanding a little bit about the gender pay gap and where it comes from and what it looks like specifically for a group of people um, recent college graduates. And the f takeaway was that um, it exists. It exists from the first year out of college. Um, and even when you get down to the apples to apples comparison, which we don't always do in sort of the aggregate, um, even when you get down to apples to apples, it's still there. Um, the second takeaway from our new report is that sort of a logical connecting point A to point B, because there's a gender pay gap, for women, um, their ability to pay back their student debt, uh, it's harder. More of their paycheck is going towards paying back student loans um, each month. They're, and that's harder for them because they have less money to work with than for other things. Um, so econ their economic security is definitely compromised by the pay gap. Um, and we see it through things like their student debt burden. Campus Progress has written and re researched a lot about student debt and how yeah. it impacts um, women. So, and you talked a little bit already about the economy and how our inability to all start at a level playing field affects like our ability to pay back those loans. So, what what does that look like for an average woman straight out of college, like on a day to day basis, as far as planning for our future? Yeah. First, you should know the the pay gap sort of for the apples to apples. You know, women and men who have the same type of degree or go into the same occupation, work about the same amount of time, um, is about seven percent. So. Um, when they get home at the end of the day, they've made 93 cents on the dollar compared to their male colleague. What that sort of results in is that a little over half of women um, have a student loan debt burden that's more than they can afford. And that it's only about 39% of men. And I say only with a caveat because at the end of the day, that's still overall a lot of students who have student debt that is more than they can afford. But it's particularly an issue for women. So on any given month, that's things like money going to student loan debt repayment um, that could be going to rent or to health insurance or to their groceries. And another issue that I think comes up is when you look at your take home pay, you see it in things like your benefits, um, your retirement savings, um, and other things that are long term economic security issues. So it's a concern for women right out of college. It's also a concern when we get to retirement. Um, and so seeing where that starts and where it comes from is really important to doing something about it, I think. How did the pay gap arise? Like, where do we start and how do we overcome that? Yeah. So in AW's research, one of the things that I think is really useful is we sort of started with the average. So with the group of people, the recent college graduates, um, it was about 82% when you didn't control for anything. So there could have been things that were different between these workers. Um, and you start to sort of pick out the things like the jobs they have and the type of education they got and the hours they worked and got to the number I mentioned a minute ago, the 93%. But what that doesn't capture is something that we know is still going on, which is discrimination in the workforce. And it's really, it's really hard to know how to measure that. But what we do know is that things like um, claims to the EEOC about gender pay discrimination, they've gone up. So it's hard to say that it isn't a factor mm -hmm. when it comes to differences in pay. So there are some sort of societal uh, issues that come up with just like the natural course that women take as far as certain majors that we pick. But then there's also a way to address it where, like, if all the variables are controlled, that we still have this gap, even though it shrinks with college education. Yeah. So with a degree not being necessarily the, the only solution to closing the gap, what other ways and steps that we can take to make sure that there is no gap at all? Yeah, so a great thing to talk about is, you know, women may decide to go into certain majors or go into certain occupations, and sometimes people make those decisions without a lot of information about what are wages and wage differences in those fields. We do also know that there can be, I think in the, the science, technology, engineering, math pipeline, mm -hmm. there can be some discouraging factors, and it can be things like you no know, role models or even biases that happen in those fields. 
Another thing that I think gets a lot of attention that's a great thing to talk about when we get to solutions too is things like salary negotiation. It's not gonna make up the whole portion, but having the tools to negotiate is good for all workers. Um, and AUW actually has some trainings that we offer. They're called Start Smart, and they, they're on college campuses, and they help people sort of get those types of skills. Um, I will also say that discrimination, it, being an issue, we could take it on through things like passing legislation like the Paycheck Fairness Act that would first disincentivize discrimination, as if we should have to, but also make sure options are available to women who are experiencing in the workplace. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah. Um, that's all the time we have for today. Please check out the report at AAUW and also check out campusprogress.org to see ways on how you can get involved on this issue.